Hey everyone, so I'm trying out a new thing here. Uh, it's not going to be happening very often, but this series is just called Outside the Box. And it's where I glance at some news happening in the video game industry that isn't specific to Nintendo. Uh, might have to do with their competitors, but is something that potentially could show a grander impact on the gaming industry. And I kind of have a couple things here about Sony, and I realize this might feel some fanboy wars. Please, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to help own, open Sony's eyes to something that could be beneficial to Nintendo gamers and Xbox gamers and all gamers everywhere. So for starters, uh, we know back during E3, Sony threw up their little white knight, we need to protect the children thing, back when uh, it was discussed about Minecraft having cross-platform support between the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, and PC. And obviously, PlayStation 4 is not partaking in that and again they white knighted saying they need to protect the children which essentially was a slight against Microsoft saying Microsoft can't properly protect kids when honestly the, the real reason is because they don't want their gamers on their platform playing with anybody else but gamers on their platform. They want to encourage people that if you want to play with your friend who has a PlayStation 4, you need to buy a PlayStation 4. It's all about money. Money, 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 money. And this is true of all companies. Nintendo's guilty of this. Xbox is guilty of this. And, you know, Sony's guilty of this. But ultimately, at least Microsoft and Nintendo, maybe it's because they're not in the lead dog position right now, are open to the cross-platform thing. It is a beneficial thing for consumers, and Sony should get on board. But speaking of protecting children and all this stuff, Sony's Twitter account was hacked a couple days ago by a group called Armine, and they've hacked other like YouTubers and other stuff in the past, and they're taking credit for this hack, and they've claimed that... Uh, that the database, the PlayStation Network database, has leaked again. Uh, and this has happened before. So I don't know if our mind has actually gotten access to the PlayStation Network database like they claim, or if um, if it's just the Twitter account and they're just trolling people and trying to get attention. Because our mind is a security company. Uh, sometimes they do these hacks. They're not doing it necessarily to harm people. They're doing it to show that there are vulnerabilities, and they want those people to come talk to them about those vulnerabilities and maybe hire them for their security purposes. Uh, it's a really interesting way to do business. I don't know how many companies take them up on it, but it certainly brings a lot of eyeballs to them. And this is uh, this happened in PlayStation Brazil, by the way. Uh, so this isn't affecting the entirety of the PlayStation Network or the entirety of uh, the PlayStation Twitter handles. There's a whole bunch of different ones, as I said. This is the Brazil handle in this case. But it's just further proof that Sony... Uh, seems to consistently now over the past two generations have an issue with stuff getting hacked. They've had their PlayStation Network hacked in the past and lost things like not only contact information, but credit card details. Now, obviously, with encryptions and everything, we don't know how much of this stuff got out, but it was a big deal back during the PlayStation 3 era, and if this is starting to happen again, even if it only affects accounts in Brazil, it's still something to consider when it comes to Sony's security methods and how maybe they haven't improved as much as they thought they have. Now, while this isn't as big of a hacking as before, it kind of leads into the further discussion on cross-platform play because the folks behind Ark Survival Evolved um, were hosting a section on Xbox One X and all this is happening over at Gamescom. And uh, they were asked specifically about, you know, the game having cross-platform play between Xbox One and PlayStation 4. And the developer replied, We have it working internally but currently, Sony won't allow it. And this gets back into the issue where cross-platform play seems to be seemingly being allowed by every platform in the world. And it's really weird because PlayStation 4 allows cross-platform play with PC versions of games. Just not if those PC versions of games also cross-platform play with Xbox One and Nintendo Switch like it will with Minecraft. And again, this really bothers me because it's so backwards thinking well i understand sony's perspective because they are a business they want to make money and this no matter what excuses sony throws out there for not supporting cross-platform fee you know e even saying you know we need to protect the children well how's your twitter account and your playstation network getting hacked protecting your children or the parents of the children that maybe have the credit card information on there because they bought games for their children like minecraft uh, that's not really protecting the children. So we know these excuses are just a bunch of bull. And in reality, Sony just cares about that money, money, money. Dollar bills, y'all. 
that the Bills, y'all, seriously, that's all it's about. And that's, I mean, like I said, that's not necessarily uh, an extra knock against Sony to try to tear them down and start some fanboy wars because Nintendo has the same issue. I mean, let's be honest. Nintendo uh, charges more than, than other companies do on their systems to make a profit. Uh, they, you know, charge... Uh, really really high prices for remasters and re-releases uh the prices on their classic games on virtual console have been known to be extremely high uh nintendo has a history of charging a lot more than things really seem worth and they get away with it and for the most part we just kind of accept it and now you know they're throwing microtransactions and dlc into games and locking things behind amiibos and doing all this crazy stuff that's really all about generating more money 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 talks so nintendo's not like lack of being guilty uh in terms of money and microsoft is obviously the same way they charge 60 bucks a year for xbox live that alone is a big you know investment and then you also have their micro transactions and their dlc and now their xbox one x coming out at 500 dollars, which i actually don't think is a bad price for the xbox one x given what's inside of it and how, how hard it is to make a comparable gaming pc especially with the uh gpu market getting completely destroyed right now uh thanks to crypto mining but you bring this all back together, and at least Microsoft and Nintendo have done one thing that is pro-consumer that doesn't necessarily inherently benefit their bottom line, and that is cross-platform play, right? All it does is bring the user base of games like Rocket League, like Minecraft, together to have a bigger install base and a bigger player base and ultimately it makes the experience better for everybody and sony is just sitting on the outside counting their dollar bills thinking they don't need to to do it and frankly they're going to get away with it because they don't need to they have double the install base of the xbox one you know let's assume i mean this is a big assumption but let's say switch was at 10 million units sold i mean they have six times the install base of that at least if not they're already at 70 million perhaps so maybe seven times the install base and we know switch isn't at 10 million yet it's probably more like at six maybe seven million total you know at best through the month of august so it's still just baffling Sitting back and just looking at the landscape here and watching a company like Sony taking advantage of their lead dog position to deny their consumers something that w is beneficial to them. And it's really weird because Sony uh, kind of got to the position they are by being pro-consumer. I mean, if you look back at 2013, they really trashed on Xbox because Xbox had a lot of things coming out that were anti-consumer. You know, things like the inability to borrow your games to friends. That Remember when that was a huge deal back in 2013? And, you know, Sony responded at at e3 was saying this is how you share games with friends then handed a disc over to a friend now it turns out a little more complex the friend has to install the game so it's not as friendly as it you know as it is with nintendo switch but it's still the, the base concept was that sony was saying look we're, we're changing nothing we're not going to make things harder for our consumers and i mean i think they did i think the fact that you require installs makes things harder but whatever i understand the technological reasons for requiring installs and read speeds and all that stuff but at the end of the day i just uh, it, it, sony needs to get on board with this cross-platform play because I want Sony to be successful. I want Microsoft to be successful. I want Nintendo to be successful, obviously. And while Sony's already successful this generation, they got to start being more forward-thinking for next generation. If they are the only platform when the PlayStation 5 comes out that does not support cross-platform play, it could potentially affect consumers and their choice on choosing Xbox or Nintendo Switch or Switch 2 or Xbox 2 or whatever's out there or Amazon's new console, uh, if all of it supports, heck, PC, if it all supports cross-platform play, but Sony. Now, obviously, Sony, like Nintendo, uh, has a lot of exclusive games in its back pocket um you know even games like mlb the show has really put out you know 2k's baseball game out the past year and now it's like the only viable ga baseball game on the market rbi baseball sorry D nothing against you but you just you don't hold a hold a candle to mlb the show and other games out there obviously the uncharted series and the last of us and the last guardian that just came out uh they have a lot of exclusive ip that is going to continue to drive sales of the platform but i worry for sony following the way of nintendo of what uh, sony's obviously for four generations now been one of the top dogs uh, only one of those generations were they not the top dog and that was in the wii generation so 
I'm worried that Nintendo, that with Nintendo, with Sony sitting on that high horse up there, that they're going to start acting like they're high on themselves in a way that's, you know, and we've already seen it with their words about protecting children, that Sony could affect their bottom line for the next generation because consumers, believe it or not, as stupid as consumers could be, and I'm one of them, where we buy into the hype, we buy into all this stuff, and we put up with a lot of things. Eventually, once the value proposition becomes better on other systems, Sony's going to have to make a quick 360 on this cross-platform stuff, or they're going to be left in the dust. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying the PlayStation 5 is going to gonna sink. I'm just saying that if Sony keeps going the way they are, and they don't change their mind about things like cross-platform, and they don't get back to being a progressive company, which I know some Nintendo fans say, oh, Sony copies us, whatever. Sony, Sony's sony been progressive in the market. It's why they're consistently a market leader. It, it, I would love to see that continue and see Nintendo kind of bounce up to that. See, I, I would love a world where all three of the major platform holders are doing fantastically well for very different reasons. Uh, but hopefully... It's not because of anti-consumerism and being full of yourself, which is what it feels like Sony is right now. Anyways, I am Nathaniel Ruffle-Jantz from Nintendo Prime. If you like this little sideshow series, let me know. If you don't want to see videos like this, that's okay as well. I'm not so sure how often I want to produce a video like this because I want to keep it strictly to Nintendo. But I felt like this was just some interesting news and potentially it could impact some cross-platform play stuff in the future. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Ruffle Jance, and if you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button, subscribe for more, and as always, folks, I will catch you in the next one.